What's up everyone and welcome to the pack. It's Alpha Wolf with Wolfpack Gaming and in today's video we'll be going over important tips for Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition. If there's a specific tip you'd like to review, chapter timestamps are included in this video to allow easy navigation. Before we get started, if you enjoy this video and want to see more content like it, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. With that out of the way, let's jump into it. If they survived in Mass Effect 2, many previous squadmates are present in Mass Effect 3. Some are tied to the main story and will join you to help stop the Reapers, while others are hidden behind missable side quests, and there's one in particular that has severe consequences if it isn't completed. I'll be making another video featuring all of these side quests to help you track down each and every one of your previous squadmates from Mass Effect 2, but in this video we'll be focusing on the Grissom Academy which involves saving Jack and her biotic students from a Cerberus attack. Jack? Shepard? This mission will become available after completing the mission Priority Palavin. Specialist Trainer will ask to speak with you and reveal that she believes Grissom Academy is in danger. Using the galaxy map, head to Grissom Academy in the Petra Nebula to begin the mission. This is the only side quest that involves a previous squadmate which actually has consequences if it isn't completed by a certain time. You have until Priority Citadel 2 to complete it before it will automatically fail, causing Cerberus to overtake the Academy, capturing Jack and the students. Spoiler alert! If this happens, Cerberus will turn Jack into a phantom, which will be forced to kill later on in the game. While playing through Mass Effect 3, make sure you take the time to regularly check in on your squad mates. Speaking to and interacting with them will unlock bonus powers for Shepard to learn. Busy? I have time if you'd like to talk. In fact, I could use the distraction. Each squad mate has two powers available that will be unlocked as you progress through the game and continue to interact with them. The first one is normally early on in the game and the second will be much later. Completing the Leviathan DLC will unlock the Dominate skill, which will temporarily indoctrinate organic enemies and force them to fight for you. It works similarly to AI hacking, but for organics. Reapers are organic synthetic hybrids, which means they can be affected by this. Brutes and Marauders are exceptionally useful to Dominate. The med bay, located on deck 3, allows you to visit a medical table in the back right of the room to respec both your squadmates and Shepard's skills in exchange for credits if you choose. This will refund all spent skill points and allow you to reallocate them on whichever character you choose. With each respec, the cost to do so will increase by 5,000 credits, up to a maximum of 25,000 per respec. You can also choose to swap Shepard's bonus power here by visiting the medical table right next to the one where you respec. There's a certain enemy type called Guardians that carry a riot shield that not only blocks damage, but can also block powers. On the lower difficulties they may not be too hard to deal with, but on insanity they can become pretty difficult and irritating. Thankfully, there's a very useful tactic you can use to easily eliminate these enemies. Using certain powers like pull on guardians will actually end up ripping the shield out of their hands, leaving them defenseless. Singularity can also work, but it isn't as reliable as pull. If you're using a sniper rifle or some other really accurate weapon, you can also aim through the slot on the shield to kill them. If you do this 10 times, you'll actually be rewarded with an achievement for doing so.
While playing through the main story, you'll eventually be reinstated as a Spectre. Spectre status recognized. Once this happens, you'll be granted access to the Spectre office located in the embassies on the Citadel. You can find it right next door to Bailey's office and across the hall from Adina's. Inside the Spectre office, you'll find three terminals. The terminal on the left can be used for private video communications that we'll unlock later on. The middle terminal is used to give Spectre authorization for certain requests that appear throughout the game. At times, these requests can reward war assets and unlock other side quests to complete. The final and by far the most important terminal on the right is a special Spectre store that sells some of the best gear in the game that you won't want to miss. On top of swapping out mods on your weapons with the weapon bench, you can also upgrade weapons in the shuttle bay on deck 5. When starting a mission, you can adjust weapon mods, but the only place that you can actually upgrade the weapon itself is in the shuttle bay at the weapon upgrade table. Weapon upgrades cost credits, and the upgrade price varies depending on the quality of the weapon, ranging anywhere from 1000 to 5000 credits for the first upgrade to level 2, increasing with each level. On your first playthrough, weapons can be upgraded to level 5. In New Game Plus, weapons can reach the max level of 10. Any weapons acquired in New Game Plus also gain 3 levels. Acquiring a duplicate weapon that's already level 5 will upgrade it to level 8. Obtaining a brand new weapon that you missed during your first playthrough will cause it to immediately unlock at level 3. Weapon mods can also be upgraded only by finding duplicates, and unfortunately, they can only reach a max level of 5. As you make your way through the main story, it'll come to a point where you'll need to return to the Citadel and speak with the Solarian Counselor. This mission is called Priority Citadel 2. During this mission, there's a weapon that can easily be missed. You'll eventually come to a point where there's a long, empty hallway with the fire sprinklers active. If you explore this hallway, you'll find a locked door, and if you look through the window, you'll notice a weapon called the M358 Talon on the other side. Trying to open the door simply tells you access is denied. If you make your way further down the hallway, you'll come to a side room on the right that contains some door controls. Activate the controls and return to the locked door, and you'll now be able to open it and obtain the weapon. Hopefully, you learned something new today and found these tips helpful. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button. There's plenty more Mass Effect Legendary Edition content on the way, so if you want to see more, make sure you also subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Take it easy, everyone.